Good morning, everybody. My name is Jo Matthews. I'm one of the regional clinical advisors for L&R. Our first session this morning is about getting hands-on with self-care. Has anybody seen any self-care or been using any, familiar with any of it? No. Good, thank you to the one person that answered. Excellent. So hopefully this will be valuable for you all to sort of make you a bit more familiar with um, what we're trying to do. So how we are starting this session is about the escalating burden of wounds. Has anybody heard about this? Oh, this is a very quiet group for a Wednesday morning. <laughs> so Julian Guest is um, a health economist and he did a large piece of work about the burden of wounds, so the prevalence, the cost, the time it takes. Um, and the lots of data came out about this. He did it first in 2012, 2013, and then we did it in 2017, 2018. So to try and get you awake and alive, roughly how many people do you think in the UK have a leg ulcer at the moment? Million. Who said a million? Have you had some training? <laughs> Very good. It's a, there's a million people at the moment in the UK that rises by 4% every year. So that number is up to um, 2020. So 4% of that times the three years so far means there's actually a lot more, but it will continue to keep rising. So here's a big question. How much money do we spend on healthcare associated with leg ulcers? Don't say a lot. It is a lot. Billions, how many billions? Oh, someone's been to some training. <laughs> 3.1 billion is how, many, how much money we spend on healthcare associated with leg ulcers. My maths is not spectacular. I can't work out how many nurses that is, but it's a lot. It's, it's at least another team. How much of your time do you think is taken up on wound care? Probably feels like all of it. <laughs> on a, well, all together. So 50% of your community nursing time is taken up on wound care. Crucially, up to 69% of leg ulcers will recur once they are healed every year. So you spend all that time and money and effort healing a leg ulcer, and then you know within a year they are going to go bounce back onto your caseload and you've got to start it all over again. So this is why we're trying to do a bit more about self-care and push that as an agenda. This is the prevalence bar versus spend by wound type. So these are a selection of the wounds that you will see, or the most common ones. You can see that venous leg ulcers are the largest amount of leg ulcers that you see. Does that feel like you see a lot of legs? That's a very disheartened nod there, yes. Um, that as you can see by the red column, that is the spend. So venous leg ulcers have the largest spend of any wound that you have on your caseloads or in your community. So some of that spend is about the dressing, some of it is your time. What came off the back of all of this data was the National Wound Care Strategy. So I'm hoping some of you are familiar with that. Some general nods. Thanks, Adele. So the National Wound Care Strategy was trying to make um, uh, a paper that made it sort of streamlined for everybody. So no matter where you were in the country, it gave us set guidelines on how we manage leg ulcers. It was trying to reduce the burden of managing lower limb wounds, trying to optimise community nursing workloads by using self-care garments and trying to improve patient outcomes. So let's have a test then because I'm still trying to wake you all up. I know it's early. Self-care, how would you define this? Education. Very good. What sort of education? I'm picking on you now. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Nutrition, yeah. Self-care is sort of an umbrella term. You might hear it called supported self-care. Self-care doesn't necessarily mean it's them that's doing it. It might be that you have friends, family, carers that are assisting them with it. Supported self-management or shared care. There are lots of conditions that actually already do a lot on self-care. So, for example, diabetes have 
Daphne and Desmond courses where you're given the education to empower the patients to look after themselves. COPD and heart failure do a lot of it. Venous disease is a long-term condition and we should see it as such. So perhaps we should start looking at moving self-care into that long-term long -term condition as well. It does not mean less care. It is dependent on the willingness and capacity of a patient. Some patients you might think aren't able and actually they are. Some people, some patients don't even know that this is a, a thing that exists. So actually, without broaching it with them, how would we know that they are potentially able to care for themselves in between? It is also dependent on the support that they have available. So sometimes that's a postcode lottery. It's some better in some places than others in terms of care. But the evidence we have for changing um, is that there are significant amount of potential benefits. So Laura Hallis Hoyes, who is a tissue viability nurse in Barnsley, um, did a big. She's done a lot on self care. She did a big piece of work. It showed that by encouraging patients to come onto the self care pathway, they were able to release 95% of their time, and there was an 83% reduction in the cost. It does also mean that you're able to utilise a wider skill mix. Compression bandages require somebody trained to put them on. In some places, that means it has to be a qualified nurse. By using the hosiery kits or the wraps, it means that you can incorporate nursing associates, student nurses, family members, support workers, etc. There's reduced recurrence, and that is likely because you're already incorporating them into a self-care plan whilst they possibly are still seeing you. Because you're starting it earlier, they are more likely to comply with it long term. If you do heal them all in bandages and then sort of drop them in a hosiery system that they either don't like or can't manage, the likelihood of them continuing it on is very small. There's improvements in sustainability outcomes, so it will reduce travel miles, and we're all about saving the dolphins at the minute, aren't we? So we need to try and look at reducing how many miles we do. And to be honest, with the traffic as bad as it is, I can't see that you get very far at the moment. And there's patient empowerment. So they have greater control in their treatment. They're wiser, they're more knowledgeable. You're likely to get more um, concordance and compliance because they're doing it with you rather than you telling them what to do. So the first step to implementing a self-care approach is to look at um, building it into a pathway. So this is one from Acune and Tickle. Um, it places the emphasis on early diagnosis, supports optimum use of compression, reduces the risk of inappropriate reduced compression. I'm sure some of you will have had patients that said, I don't like this, it's too tight, and have been moved to a reduced compression system. If they have a leg ulcer and their Doppler is a normal range, they must have full. Reduced will not heal them. It also encourages the prevention of recurrence because it's utilising the self-care options first line rather than going straight to bandages. So starting the self-care conversation, do it from the first assessment. So a new patient comes on, you're doing your full holistic assessment, start it from the word go. Who do they have available? Would this be an option that they'd consider? Give them the positives of it. They can go back out to Bingo or to Morrison's or um, perhaps they no longer need to see community nursing teams. They can go to GP surgeries, for example. You're not sort of asking them that you're never seeing them again. But what you might be able to do is reduce the amount of times that you see them and share it half and half. Be understanding. We know a lot of patients feel misunderstood. Um, about their condition. A lot of patients, you'll have seen them, they've got a wound, it's been a traumatic wound, for example. As soon as you say it's a leg ulcer, panic alarms are going off, and they worry and they're freaking out because they don't know what's going on. So be understanding with them, explain everything. Patients only actually absorb about 10% of any conversation that you have. So you won't just have to say it on the first visit that you do. You will have to keep repeatedly going over it. You might have to bring things in a bit at a time so that they absorb it all. 
be helpful. I feel like that might be obvious. Is that not the point of nurses? We are helpful people, or we try to be. Offer help and advice. It might be that they don't know what's available. They don't know that they can get extra finances for carers. They don't know that there are wound care clinics or free buses, for example. So it will depend on what is available in your area. Try and keep them up to date and create a positive environment. Keep advising them and telling them what is good about their leg. So it's getting smaller, the shape's getting better, the ulcer's getting cleaner. Just keep reiterating the good things that, that will work in your favour. But also ask them, what is their personal goal? Is their goal to heal the leg ulcer? Is their goal just to have a smaller leg? Is the, their goal might just to be for it to be out of bandages. It, it might be as simple as that for somebody. You're, not, they may well come and say, actually, I'd like to go to Australia for six months. So that is your aim. That's a big aim. But potential, for a lot of patients, it will be as simple as, I want it to be less wet or less smelly or less painful. And we should be asking them, it is their leg at the end of the day. It belongs to them. It's we need to know what's important for them about this leg. So here is your first assessment section uh, with immediate necessary care. So do you all know that you can start somebody in up to 20 millimetres of mercury before a Doppler? Some quiet nods, excellent. If you don't know, then you do know now. So you can start somebody in up to 20. Um, this looks like a class one hosiery or liners. You do need to rule out red flags first. So we're ruling out um, sepsis, acute and chronic limb threatening ischemia. DVTs, suspected skin cancers, and bleeding varicose veins, which is a new one that's been added. Once you've ruled those out, you can start them in up to 20, simple dressing. The quicker they're in compression, the quicker they will heal. There are patients, however, who won't be suitable for self-care, in which case we would be looking at bandage systems such as Actico um, to either move fluid, reshape the leg, or help reduce the exudate. What the compression does is it improves venous return. So when their vein is out like this and their valves don't meet, it squeezes that vein back together, pushes the valves back together, um, stops blood and edema leaking into the tissues. It's treating the underlying cause. So a venous leg also has come because the veins aren't working very well. Once they are in compression, they are in it for life. It will look different at different times of their leg pathway, but compression is for life, not for Christmas. <laughs> you, you, could, you can have that. You can tell your patients that. It's for life, not for Christmas. Compression and dogs. There you go. Um, because they, once they are having a squeeze, they will always continuously need it. It will just look different at different times. It reduces the limb congestion, inflammatory effects, and it allows it conti to continue healing. On the pathway, you've got areas where self-care is appropriate. So if you've got an ulcer where the exudate is contained and they have got a normal limb shape, they could use kits. Um, if they've got some reducible edema, you can use wraps. But the pathway is very clear with little arrows sending you to where is appropriate for your patient. And they will float between different bits at different times, depending on what's happening to them. So let's have a test then. Do we think this leg is appropriate for self-care? No. Because? <laughs> well, it's... Well, the shape of the leg, yeah. um, it shouldn't really look like an Ikea vase. Um, that is a, a leg shape that would need to be in bandages because we would need to move that fluid out and reshape the leg. Um, it looks like it's had something either inappropriate or elastic sort of squeezing around it. It's created folds and misshapen the leg. What about this one? No, no? absolutely. It's a very wet leg. You'll tend to find venous leg ulcers have a lot of exudate because they've got a lot of fluid in that leg. Um, so we would need to use bandages first to help dry that up, move the fluid out, and then you would be able to sidestep them. What about these two then? 
would we would we potentially yeah yeah absolutely they're both a normal leg shape it's not about the size of the ulcer as long as the ulcer is contained within a dressing and that dressing is containing the leakage both of these legs could go in self-care absolutely so the self-care systems we have that i will be demonstrating on my delightful assistant over here shortly um, are the hosiery kits and then the compression wrap systems. So I'll go through more of those when we demo. How the wraps work, they work slightly differently. So the hosiery gives you a large squeeze at the ankle, graduated compression, big squeeze at the ankle, reduces as it goes up the leg. The wraps work more similarly to the Actico short stretch bandage, which have low resting pressures and high working pressures. So they mimic the way your leg naturally works. So you get a relax and squeeze effect from them. I'll let you just take a photo. <laughs> I'll live pause everyone. Magic. They're cost effective, they're comfortable. Um, you can put dressings underneath these as well. Um, they come in, we've got beige and black. I'll be demonstrating a bit of both colors on Ruth's leg for you. Cost wise, a wrap costs 131 pounds, but it stays at that cost for the whole term of six months because you buy one and it lasts for six months and that's it this is compared to a two-layer bandage system where the cost is drip fed out of your budgets essentially because it's a bit at a time rather than all in one go so actually at the end of six months you can see a significant cost difference between the two this is based on one leg twice a week if you've got bilateral legs or if you were seeing it more often, you, can, you will know that that price of the bandage system will be double, triple, compared to the one wrap system. Are you one to wash and one to wear. Still half the price. Still half. So do you think any of you have got patients that are fit for self-care or could think about self-care or that oh is anyone debating it there must be at least one patient somewhere oh you've got your hand up have you got a question yes and I will demo your lovely question. Um, that lady, if for those that didn't hear, was saying about stockings are brilliant, self-care is brilliant, but dexterity can be an issue. It absolutely can. So we will demo the hosiery and the wraps and wear both fit um, because for those where dexterity is an issue for the hosiery kits, the wrap might be a better option for them. On our stand, we have got a couple, uh, we've got loads of self-care assistants and leaflets and things. So after this lovely session, we will be up there. You can come and collar us or not. It's entirely up to you. Um, so we will go through the ready wrap first. Um, so <coughs> based on your, actually your question came at just the right time. So based on what you were saying, I'll go through the ready wraps first. Is anyone familiar with the ready wraps or has seen them? Yes. So the ready wrap is a modular system. It comes in lots of different pieces. Um, it's Velcroed. It's full therapeutic compression. So it's for people after a Doppler. Gives 40 millimetres of mercury above. This is the foot piece. I've got it in black. Oh, hold on. Wait. There. <laughs> <laughs> that is the... You can't see it very well in black. That is the black. This is the beige calf piece. There we go. This, this is unusual. Um, that's the beige calf piece. They will always need a foot and a calf piece if you're doing below knee. Each piece comes with a sock. The sock has no compression in it. It's just a liner sock. It protects the leg from the wrap and the wrap from the leg. Helps you put dressings and things on underneath it if they're like non-adhesive type dressings. So, ooh, am I going to break everything as I bend? Hold on. There we go. So, you would have the sock on first as you're applying this. 
There is a below knee one if you're doing foot and calf. If you're doing an entire leg, we do thigh liners as well. We do a knee piece and a thigh piece, so you can do an entire leg if needs be. For measuring for a ready wrap, is that, is that, there you go. This is the ready wrap form. We've got some of these on our stand so you can come and get them. It's very similar to measuring for a hosiery kit, but you do need to measure in some slightly different sizes. So you would measure around the widest part of the calf there, and then just above the, two centimetres above the ankle bone, which is there. You're then measuring around the widest part of the foot here, the dorsum of the foot, and then at the base of the toes. And we know that some people's feet, they might have quite a large dorsum of their foot, but then their toes might be more normal size. So that's the point for those two sizes. To apply, you do the foot piece first. So there are, the feet pieces are left and right. The calf pieces and the other pieces up the leg are generic. So it's either left or right. There is a little tag that will tell you whether this is left or right, like a piece of clothing. So with the foot piece, it's white first, then light blue, then dark blue. It's the same color coordinated Velcro system the whole way up the leg. It's short stretch inelastic system. So you pull and stick. You can't over squeeze somebody's foot or leg with this system because it's doing the same relax and squeeze effect that the Actico does or the short stretch system does. So it's white first, then it's the light blue, and then it's the dark blue. So it's great for your patients because they can't overdo it. They can't squeeze themselves too tight. They can still get shoes on with this. I can demo that upstairs for you that you can still get a shoe on with it. Can they do it too loose? They can do it too loose. And so that will be part of your education um, that they need to be pulling it as far as it will go. Possibly demo it on yourself so that you can show them how it's yeah. going. But you can't. It, because it's inelastic, it won't actually go anywhere. So, but yes, you do need to make sure, and that might be part of your holis full holistic assessment, is assessing have they got the dexterity or the understanding um, and are they going to comply or are they just going to loosen it off after you leave. So this is the calf piece. It's got a spine at the back. This helps with the static stiffness index. You can use the um, ready wrap on larger legs with more reducible edema. Um, it starts the calf piece at the ankle, so two centimetres above the ankle, and you pull and stick. You do the smaller Velcro first, and then the larger one, because if you do the larger one first, you'll see that it's like going against skin, so that you know that that's the wrong way round. You pull and you stick. If you've got people where they've only got one hand that they can use, this can still be done one-handed. So it's white, light blue, dark blue, the whole way up the system. And you'll see that we are getting the 50-50 overlap effect that you would get from a bandage system. Because it's modular, you can do bits in different sizes. So you could have a medium foot, a large calf, for example. You can mix and match it. With the hosiery, you need all the measurements lining up to be in one size. Um, you can get extender straps. So if they've got one area that needs an extra 10 centimetres while you're reducing edema, you can get those. So the strap adds an extra 10 centimetres on and you can add those onto it. We've got a mix and match of colours here, the beige and the black. But you can see that that's nice and easy to apply. So if you've got relatives that are doing it that struggle, if they're the issue with dexterity, they might find the wrap easier to pull and stick rather than trying to get on the hosiery kits. Has anybody got any questions about the wrap system? The tolerance level in what... Yep. Yep. So it should be similar tolerance-wise to a bandage system. 
because it's working by the same science. Um, I would say that if you're new starting it and they are getting increased pain, I'd increase the painkillers because you don't want them to be taking it off, you want them to be managing it. Um, that patient sounds like possibly there's underlying issues going on because pain relief should work. And actually, as the compression's working and the ulcer's getting smaller and the leg's getting smaller, their pain will start to reduce. So it might be that when you first start it, you have to up the pain relief and then slowly reduce it down as everything's getting better. Um, the ready wrap is hand wash only. Um, so that might be part of your thought process for people if they, haven't, if they can't do that. The liners can go in the washing machine, but the wrap actually needs to be hand washed. Uh, it can't go in the washing machine because it would damage the Velcro and the material. No fabric conditioner with it. It's easy to put on. I'll undo it from Ruth's leg. And I'll just demo, if I can, putting it on myself to show you how easy it is to do. Because I've applied it to Ruth, but there is also people that will be applying it themselves. So it's in. Now, I'm aware that I'm a 39-year-old person this is quite easy for. <laughs> but the foot piece has finger holes in it, so that's easier for people with dexterity. I have seen somebody use a grabber. You know, a crocodile grabber thing. Have they got an official title? I don't know what they're officially called. They're at the side of everybody's sofa <laughs> to put them on because you can put them on, I suppose, loosely first and then keep pulling them as your dexterity allows, I suppose. You don't have to literally, you could just keep tightening them up. If you've got people with reducible edema, they will need to keep tightening it as the day goes on as well. Um, because if they're doing a lot of movement or they have their legs up, if they're a well-behaved patient that has some afternoon rest and puts their legs up, they'll need to re-tighten it before they stand back up because their legs will shrink. So here's the uh, calf piece on myself, me putting it on. So you can see that it's just as easy to put on yourself as it is to put on somebody else. The difference between this and kits as well is that you can have larger dressings underneath this one compared to the hosiery kit. So I've been able to put that on myself in a minute, I don't quite know what it was in terms of time, but about a minute, I've been able to put that on myself. All the bonuses are that patients or carers can take it off, wash and shower them, then you all you have to do is go and put it back on. They can moisturise their leg every day, which will improve their skin condition. They can be a part of changing their own dressing, so it might be that you see them on a Monday and they do it themselves on a Thursday, as long as they know what they're looking for as they're managing their leg you can work with them and empower them to be a bit, play a bit more of a bigger part in their leg care. So that is the ready wrap system. I shall leave it on my leg because it feels nice. We've then got the hosiery kit system. So have you seen these? Are you familiar with them? Yeah, yeah these people are more familiar with these, I, I believe. So we have two systems. We have the Activa hosiery and we have the Actilymph. Does anybody know the difference between the two and what goes on what? So Activa is... Someone must know. Act is Activa British or European? British. British. Actilymph, British or European? You've never seen it. Oh, well, you get a gold star for being honest. It's fine. Foreign. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's European. So the Brit Activa British Standard Hosiery is for people without edema. The Actilymph European Standard Hosiery is for people with. And that's because the knit is slightly different. So on the Activa, it's a circular knit. So if you imagine it like a balloon, if you filled a balloon with water, what will it do? Expand. Just keep expanding. So there's no containment. The Actilymph is more of a crisscross knit. So it's a lot stiffer. If you poured water into a vase, what would it do? just come out the top. Your vase would stay the same shape and your water would come out the top. So that is what the difference is between the two. And it's important that you get the right system on the right person. 
if you put something with elastic in on somebody with somebody with some edema, it will squeeze into that fluid and you'll start to get folds. We have two colour systems, so it's white and sand, or sand and black. I've brought both colour systems so you can see them. They come with two liners, and then a, if it's Activa, it's a class three stocking, and if it's Actilymph, it's a class two. When you add them together, they get 40 millimetres of mercury and above. So they get full therapeutic compression, it's after a Doppler and your full holistic assessment. Um, the liner helps put the class three on, so I am going to demonstrate this now. For the hosiery, you are measuring in a similar place um, to the ready wrap, the widest part of the calf, just above the ankle, and then the length of the foot to the end of the longest toe. And I say that because their longest toe is not always their big toe. Just, just so you know. <laughs> so this is the liner. The easiest way to do this is the pinch and fold method. So you pinch it at the heel, fold it back. Then you put this on the foot. And then you can roll that liner up the leg like so. That is the easiest I've ever made that look. So then you've got the class three, so you do the same thing again. So you pinch at the heel, fold it back down, put this over the foot. You have got, the liner is closed toe, the class three over the top is open toe. You don't want two class to uh, closed toes together because they'll have stitching sort of digging in on the base of their toes. That's it. You then adjust the hosiery so that it is comfortable for the patient, but it has glided. Is that a proper word? It's a Yorkshire word. It has glided, <laughs> slid over the liner underneath because the liner is a silky material. So the class three will glide over the top. We do have some application aids and things like an Actiglide that will help if people can't do that. With the hosiery, you need a more normal shaped leg, even if there is some edema. And the dressings would need to be like a silicone board type dressing to go underneath it. You can't use large, super absorbent type pads underneath it because it will disturb the shape of the leg. If they've had edema and you've moved it in bandages and you're switching across, they will always need active lymph because that fluid will rebound if you take them out and put them in something elastic. The two forms look like these for measuring. So the green is the Activa and then the uh, British standard and then the red is the Actilymph European standard. Measurements are the same on both and all the sizes are on there. They go up to extra, extra large. Ruth's demonstrating a large one. Stocking. <laughs> I'll add that in. Demonstrating a large stocking. So you can see it does go up to a larger size. The ready wrap actually goes up to an even larger size. The largest calf size you can have on the ready wrap is 69 centimetres, which is big. It will go for bigger legs. Here are some references. We've got them up on the stand if you need them. Thank you very much for trying to answer and nodding in the right places. Thank you very much.